Okay. So thank you for coming back after lunch, and I hope you managed to have some interesting conversations with your fellow participants and maybe starting to think about um, think projects that you might like to work on um, in the next few days with the view to that presentation on Friday. And hopefully that last session um, has made you think about agri-tech um, and health and on education and things that might be, might be possible. Um, I'd like to introduce you to Surya Raghu, who I first met in 2008 at one of these workshops in Trieste in Italy. Uh, since then, I've been um, honored to work with Raghu in over a dozen countries and on nearly 20 workshops since then. So um, there is not much about entrepreneurship that Raghu doesn't know. In fact, probably there isn't. Um, and he's not only a fantastic engineer, but also is a successful businessman in having commercialized some of the many of the products that he has invented. So I'm going to hand you over to Raghu and um, let you proceed. Right, thank you, Richard. And uh, thank you, Rodrigo. Rodrigo in uh, Brazilian, right? So my name is Surya Raghu in American, but Surya Hagu in uh, Brazilian. Okay, so uh, very nice to meet you all and uh, I think Richard has already mentioned that this is a very intense uh, workshop. Uh, for the five days we all will be working uh, you know, very hard day and night. Uh, <clears throat> and it's been designed so that every day you gather some tools, some ideas, and every evening you have some food for thought that you take it home and digest and use it for the next uh, day's uh, program. Right? And uh, Richard will tell you more about the uh, workshop final uh, uh, pitch that you all have to make and uh, that will be on Friday. So, Richard, can I ask you if I can make a pitch? Yes, absolutely, that'll be, that'll be fun. <laughs> okay, so I have a device and I thought I'll tell, show you what kind of pitch uh, I want to make and uh, then maybe Richard will have some questions, so will Rodrigo. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, okay. So, tell me when the clock starts. Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. So, <clears throat> I want to talk to you today about a serious situation globally, that is the problem of yes, okay, the problem of pneumonia for children. Nearly a million children die of pneumonia, uh, and that's because they go undetected or they're not diagnosed properly. They don't have access for diagnosis of that. And uh, that was in 2016, you had nearly you know, 900,000 deaths. That's only counted. Probably many more died because of that. And in Brazil, <coughs> five to nine percent of under five deaths is attributable to pneumonia, and only 50% of them are children taken to the hospital. So similar thing can be expected in elderly people, aged people above 80 who cannot go to hospital or who cannot be uh, diagnosed properly, and they also die. We don't have numbers for that at all. And uh, misdiagnosis 
is a big problem in <coughs> everywhere. So there is a need for finding some solution for this, an easier solution, like one of our colleagues mentioned from the health tech. So our company, it's called Health Jacket Technologies, based in Sao Paulo, Brazil. And we have come up with a solution. And the solution is a wearable jacket that can record the breathing sound in children. And this can be transmitted remotely to a medical center where easy diagnosis can be made. And what is the value we provide to the society? Okay. So it's a wearable jacket that will help early detection and correct diagnosis of pneumonia so that immediate medical attention is provided to patients and save lives. So I'm not putting any numbers in terms of dollar value, but I'm putting that it can save lives. Okay. <clears throat> so who are we? Our company is the following. That's myself. I have taken several products to the market. And Brian is the inventor and CTO. I have my colleague Rodrigo, who is the chief operating officer. He knows about the strategy, management, and manufacturing. Alexandra is marketing and sales. We have a lot of Latin America experience, Latin and South America. Same with Brenda, with finance background. We have an advisory board. We have a legal advisor. We have an entrepreneur and investor who can advise us, and a pediatric pulmonology who is going to help us in the diagnosis of this. <clears throat> What's the market opportunity? <clears throat> we have nearly 21 million uh, uh, units that is needed globally. But if I'm just looking into Latin America, it's 4 million. That includes Brazil. Okay. So it's geographically distributed. And the product status is it's patent pending in Brazil, Africa, Asia, Europe, and the US. And 10 prototypes are fabricated. And we have data from patients, 100% correlation with their condition of pneumonia, and consistent data from all. The technology has been validated with standard devices. We have conducted human factor study. We have pursued FDA and CE certification for exports and zero false negatives. That means it will not detect or it will not miss a single uh, case of pneumonia. Eight false positives, it gives a warning. You can check it again if you are not sure. And what is the business model? How do we want to make money out of this? So we want to give it free to patients. But the telephone company in Brazil is willing to give us a contract for three years and buy 1,500 jackets. The phone company will charge hospitals and doctors for services. Okay. So it's free to the patients who cannot afford these things. It's also subsidized by pharma companies which produce related medicines, that's antibiotics. So we want to sell it to the pharma companies. We want to sell it to the hospitals, private and government hospitals. They'll rent it out to patients. And sometimes we want to sell it directly to affordable patients and even, and even out the cost. That is, those who can afford, we really want to sell it at a higher price. And those who cannot, they'll get it free because of the contract with the phone company. 
So we have done computation analysis. The computation is shown in yellow. And we have definitely significant advantages in terms of false negatives or the cost. And the screening time is only 20 seconds compared to the uh, computation, which is five minutes test. And the Pulmo, it needs a trained medical professional for it to test, whereas we, a family member, can check it, you know, put the jacket on, send the data, he or she will get the information within a few minutes. So, how do we want to sell it? We can't obviously, the total market is 24 million units, as I mentioned to you. This is distributed all over the globe, but we want to focus in Brazil. So the serviceable market size is 4 million units in this area. The target market we are looking for is 3 million units. We cannot access everyone. So we are looking at a target market of 3 million. And the market share that we look for in the first five years is about 1 million uh, units of that. We have made some calculations, financial calculations. The financial projections are shown here. That is, we will take 48 months to break even. That is when we start making money. Two minutes. Yes, I'm almost done. So we are asking for fund of $500,000. And we need it for the following activities. That is, device tooling and manufacturing manufacturing support, marketing, and distribution efforts. And in return, we promise the investors, that is you, a return of five times that money that you invest, that is 500,000, five times that in six years. And we also want to give 20% equity in, smart, in the company, Smart Jacket. Okay? So we can prevent. One million deaths per year due to pneumonia. We are really helping you know, people not <laughs> die, children particularly. We are seeking half million dollars for 20% of the company and five times the return on investment in six years. We'll start making profit in 48 months. That is, we'll start getting income. We have a strong management team and an advisory team. And the telephone company, Uphone, is willing to buy 1,000 units at the beginning. They have agreed to buy that as soon as we produce that. I hope this was convincing enough for you to invest in my company. Thank you, Richard. Very good. good. OK, so Raghu finished with 15 seconds on the clock. So perfectly timed within 10 minutes. Um, but I'd just like to point out a few things from that presentation. Well, A, it was done in 10 minutes. That's what you have to do on Friday. And it, oh, it, doesn't, it doesn't necessarily, your slides do not necess necessarily need to be in that order. However, what Raghu did with the first slide, I believe, was to grab your attention about a problem. He said, pneumonia is killing lots of young people, and the numbers are big. So that was his very first slide, and that is, you need something which is going to get your audience's attention. And we'll talk more about this on the communications um, uh, session we do on Wednesday. And then just, there were 12 slides, and normally in these sorts of presentations, you would expect to allow one minute per slide on average, so a 10 minute presentation, 10 to 12 slides is about right. But if you had 20 slides and tried to present 20 slides in 10 minutes, that would probably not work or not be as effective um, for the purposes of this workshop. Um, he covered all of the important points. He gave you a problem, he gave you a solution, he told you 
at what stage the technology was. And from my point of view, he asked for an amount of money. He said what he was going to do with that money. He said what the return might be, might be, for the investment. And he talked about the market. And he also named the first potential customer. So the telephone company who was prepared to buy the first 1,000 units and to get the company started. Um, so there were a lot of good things in the presentation. Now I'm not going to do a 10 minute Q&A, but what you will have to be prepared for on Friday is being asked questions. For instance, using Raghu's example is, so can you tell me how you arrived at your valuation of two and a half million dollars of the business today when it hasn't sold anything? Because that's what 20% for 500,000 values the company at. Yes, if, if he's saying to me, I can have 20% of the company, but it's going to cost me 500,000, then that's two and a half, it's a two and a half million dollar valuation for a company that has not sold anything. And he's only giving me 20%. So it's not a controlling stake in the business. Um, so I could ask lots of questions about the financials and Raghu will have the answers to those which he might have in additional slides which he might bring up to answer those questions. So that is the sort of thing that we are looking for from you in groups on Friday. It doesn't need to be exactly the same but oh, we want it in English but we would like it to cover these essential areas, which if you go back to that sheet in your packs, the judging criteria, it talks about the business, the business idea, the model, it talks about the finance, the marketing, it talks about the team. Raghu's third slide, I think, out of the 12, was these are the people in my team who are going to make it happen. And I often say, People do not invest in, in early stage businesses, people don't invest in the product. They invest in the team who are going to build the company. So we're interested in who the people are, what the experience is, why that experience is rele relevant to getting this business off the ground. So Raghu mentioned these are people with Latin American, South American experience in particular areas in health, and that gives the project credibility. Now, it is a workshop exercise, so uh, we allow a little bit of creativity um, uh, to, to present. This is about going through the process of putting together a presentation with the correct or useful information in. Um, and it is very specifically for this workshop, this presentation might be different if it was a different type of event, different type of fundraising. If it was Shark Tank, which I don't know if Shark Tank was mentioned in the last session, but uh, I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically it's a different way of pitching. Um, and there are other ones around the world. So, but for the purposes of this workshop, this is the sort of presentation that we are looking for from you and your groups on Friday morning. Any questions about this presentation itself and you will get a copy of this on the website um, hopefully by tonight all all the materials that we show will be available by um, tonight did, 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 did everyone understand the financial slide did anyone understand the financial slide ah some, yes yeah, some answers hang on let me a question you did understand Oh, all oh, right. Okay, you're one of the accountants. Okay, okay that makes sense. That's oh. okay. Good. There's, there's another person who's got some accounting experience, isn't there? Who is the other person who's done accounting? No, not not admitting it. Okay, so so because one of the things I'm going to do with you tomorrow is give you an introduction to some accounting and finance terms and explanations which will hopefully make that financial slide more understandable. 
But in order to be able to, in order for Ragu to be able to say, I want 20, I want, I'm offering 20% of the company for $500,000 and in five years I can give you a five times, potentially five times back on your money, he needs to have done some calculations. And if you don't know how to do those calculations today, I hope that you will at least understand what is involved in doing those calculations by Wednesday lunchtime. You don't doesn't mean you're going to have to do them for real, but you are going to have to understand about what's expected. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Say that again. Which one? The, fi the first slide, the very first slide. <laughs> Is it on this? Yeah. I'll just go back. Uh -huh. It's gone. Is it? It's oh, gone. Yeah. That one. Slide one. Okay. And okay. I'd like to take this opportunity just now to see if I, I appreciate there are some of you in the audience here, the participants, have already started businesses. So have some experience in actually starting something. It would be useful if there is anybody in the audience here who has got an idea that they would like to pitch. I don't mean do a big slide presentation. I just mean come up here and say, I was interested in the uh, presentations before lunch and some of the areas that were talked about and I have an idea about drug delivery or packaging or something in agrotech about post-harvest losses and I'd like to form a group to work on this to put a presentation together for Friday. So if there is anybody who has an idea currently and particularly in those three areas that were talked about before but it doesn't need to be but we are we thought those were three good areas health Agriculture and education are usually good areas for start-up businesses. So if anyone had an idea they would like to come and mention to the, to the group. Yes, no? Do we have anything? Ah, fantastic. Is, uh, it is, is it Luis? Yep. Yes, Luis. Good. Okay. I love it when there's an idea. Brilliant. Okay. Uh, so my name is Luis. I was talking the lunch with uh, Wallace, and we felt about uh, there's a problem uh, when we try to evaluate the the education in the maker uh, think. There's a wave about the maker think, so there's not uh, there's not proper way to evaluate this thing to evaluate this. So we are trying to do that. We want to evaluate how the makers learning is working, in, if it's working. Because we don't know if it's okay, oh, we put the, the kids there to play and have fun, and to, it, it's, they should learn, but we have to evaluate that with some scientific data to do that. So the basic idea is to evaluate if the maker's uh, education is working. <laughs> That's the part that we are not there yet. That's, that's the idea. Okay. Yes. We just have the problem. We don't have the solution yet. Okay. That's okay. That's a good start. Okay. Thank you. Do we have, do we have any other problems seeking solutions? Um, okay. Yes. Do you want to come down and tell everyone about it? Good. Uh, 
hello to you all. My name is Daniela. Uh, I live in the Brazilian semi arid in a specific place uh, where we are by the San Francisco River Basin. And we are one of the largest uh, areas of fruit production in Brazil to export uh, mainly mangoes and grapes. Uh, the problem is that we are in the semi-arid and we depend on the water of the river. Uh, but we've been through a long drought from over six years and not only the farmers but also the the buyers are interested about how we are using the water which is our main uh, natural resource to produce uh, the fruits to mainly to Europe and the farmers most of them they don't manage the water well uh, because Although it's scarce, it's a cheap resource for them. But we are concerned about the environment also. And the idea is to have uh, it's, uh, an agrotech product where we have uh, information. It's mostly for an app uh, that the farmer can use on the cell phone or on the computer at the farm. Like most of the farms there, they have uh, Wi-Fi, they can reach it, which is uh, something important for the, for the product. And the farmers need to have in the app information about the soil, uh, the climate, the phenological state of the plant, to know um, how much they need to use of water on that day for that plant. So they can manage uh, the water in a sustainable way and they can add value to the product when they export it. Very good, I like it. Yeah. So uh, an, app, an app to help the farmers. Okay. Um, as we're on a roll, any, any other problems, ideas? Yes, great. Yeah. Hello. Uh, the idea I had is that uh, bipolar disorder mood is, uh, uh, it takes a long time to correctly, properly diagnose. And I thought some kind of uh, uh, biological stuff, I think, <laughs> uh, also biomarker, I don't know what would be to early diagnosis. Okay, to find some way to early diagnose the disease because it has a severe impact in the life quality of the family and the, and the, uh, the person that has the disease, okay? Bipolar disorder. Bipolar, yeah. So uh, a bipolarism detection device. Yeah, yeah, so really so really okay, good. Do we have any, any others at this point in time? Yes, yes, great. Good. My name's Andrea. Um, the problem is patients with diabetic food Usually they have chronic wounds that they don't cicatrize, they don't cicatrizate, and they need amputation. So the solution is to use magotherapy, uh, flies, from flies, and those maggots helps to, they want to continue the cicatrization. So using, using maggots to um, help the healing of wounds. Um, and I think the clever bit is the development of the right maggots and the effectiveness of them. Yes? Some, something like that? Uh, we already know the, the maggots and how they work. Okay. We don't know how to cook them very well. Okay, right. So uh, to distribute, yes, and get them out there. Okay, uh, any, anything else? No? Okay. So, 
just thinking about I mean, sometimes ideas they they develop into other ideas um, and quite often that you can you can start with one particular project thinking oh this is the great idea and it may develop into something else or one idea may lead to another um, so I'm just going to think of one on the on the farming app for instance where's our farming app lady oh yes um, the um, and thinking about the presentation we had before lunch and the gamification of um, uh, in learning if you want to get somebody to use something it may and particularly even if it's for their own benefit uh, in terms of improving the uh, yield and the quality of the product sometimes adding some sort of it's fun to use as well um, can help that work um, I don't know is anybody here familiar with Duolingo the uh, language app Duolingo yeah so Duolingo has a, a gamification um, element to it in that it has uh, points and wise owls and things that pop up if you do things and, it, and it's, it's quite clever in nudging you to continue to, to use it um, but at the end of the day it is a language learning app which is using some gamification to improve its effectiveness with the people who use it um, although you don't you can use it and ignore that um, but it just might be throw out some other ideas about are there some existing things which could be improved the usage could be improved through some sort of gamification uh, remember uh, I think one of the panel said it's digitization you know the, that's going to be um, a lot of the future products will probably be digitizing things that we might do already without the, the digitization um, and apps are certainly becoming very common um, in helping us in different ways um, it's also quite cheap to develop an app um, so uh, and it may not be um, it may not be the, the the new blockbuster company but it might be a step on the way to something else uh, building platforms if you think about salt about think about the um, the, the uh, educational toy their business they've created a platform and having built the platform it's very cost effective to add other features to it so areas in that might be another um, or extensions of that idea might create other ideas um, okay well we'll have a pause on the on the ideas for now and hopefully that gives you something to to think about um, Raghu, did you want to add anything to what we've done? Should we talk about the KSA yeah. at this stage? Good. Okay. So in your packs... Can I make a small mention? Yes, you can. Uh, yeah. uh, I think uh, the classes, uh, they have a very rich background. And uh, even for the problems or ideas they suggested, they, there might be uh, extraordinary talent in this class to find people who are interested in those groups, right? And uh, combine your knowledge or strengths to work on those ideas or any new idea that you might generate in the coming day or two. So with that, maybe we can go to this KSA thing. So in your packs, you'll find a, a sheet of, oops, sorry. In your packs, you'll find a sheet of A4 um, in fact, I'll show you one, so you can, you can open this one up. That's one? No, that's the yeah. judging sheet. Okay. That's one? Last. Yeah. Okay. So it's just, it's, you probably find two sheets of paper stapled together. There's not, not much on the second sheet. Um, this is a this is a sheet that we've used on other workshops to try to help to develop um, idea and team formation and I hope it's reasonably self-explanatory we have 
it, it's an individual form for you to do as an individual. So you would put your, put your name on the top and then underneath the, the knowledge and underneath the skills and underneath the abilities, you would just write down some key words. Have you, you got one? So I say again? Do we have more of these? Um, there should have been one in your pack. You got one? You haven't got one? Okay. Um, right. Is everyone... You've got one? Okay. 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 Is there anybody else who hasn't got one of these? Just, uh, looks like maybe just one pack got missed. Got missed. Okay. So underneath the knowledge or sk and skills and abilities, the idea is just to write down something about yourself it, relevant to those three categories. And then over the page, just something that you think is relevant um, for the purposes of this workshop that you've accomplished with those abilities, um, the skills, the knowledge, and the, um, that you've, you've listed on the previous page. And the reason for doing this is to allow participants who you haven't already communicated with because we'd like to put these up. We'll put, we put these up usually on the wall on the mezzanine. Um, it gives you an opportunity to see maybe skills and ideas that other people might have. And it also, what I'd like you to do, is at the bottom of the first page, if you've got an idea, but you, you don't really want to come and say it in front of the, the group, put your idea on here, and then somebody may say, that's a good idea. I'd like to talk to that person about that idea. Because I know sometimes you want to just hold back on the idea. Um, so it gives you an opportunity to sort of write the idea down here and then let other people know about it when in, a different, in a different way. And the team formation will probably improve if there is an idea which people think, that sounds interesting, I'd like to work on that, for the purposes of this workshop. And it may be outside your existing discipline. Again, for the purposes of this workshop, you may have come here with a, um, an agrotech background, but there may be an educational project that you think, well, actually that sounds quite interesting. And you can do whatever you want for the purposes of this workshop. Um, so keep an open mind about the ideas. You, just because you work in, in biotech doesn't necessarily mean you can only work on a biotech project because you may have other skills which would be relevant for an edutech project. So to give you a, an example, um, I was finance director of a company called Cellcentric. Cellcentric. And Cellcentric is still, still trading. It started over 12 years ago. Um, I got involved in about year three and was with it for about five years. Cellcentric is an epigenetics business. So it was, it was started with the intention of being able to change the genome to cure mainly cancers, but other, other projects. At the height, and we'd ra we went every year we had to raise money to keep the company going. And over the course of up to about year seven or eight, we'd raised about four or five million pounds for this company. But the company's team consisted of a chemist, a biologist, a, micro a microbiologist, and a commercial person. And the mixture of disciplines that you need for epigenetics, we needed these different people. Um, and the company, okay, it, we had, 20, we had 20 targets at one point. There is one target left. So hopefully it is now going to make, make some money for the remaining investors with the one target. But the demonstration is particularly biotech companies 
need a combination of skills these days. And I would like to break down the barriers between the chemistry department and the physics department and the biology department and say there needs to be more cooperation, collaboration. And it is happening. It is happening because it has to happen, because business makes it happen. Okay, so take a few minutes to fill in your, your KSA forms. Um, and if there are any questions whilst you're doing that, please shout up.
You're, you're welcome to write as many ideas as you want on the bottom of the first page. When I said you can write an idea, I meant you can write as many ideas as you want. But, uh, yes. So these are, these are, for the purposes of this workshop, I would avoid just writing down your, like your, your, your CV. So I've got a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a PhD. What I'm interested in therein is um, any uh, commercial activity um, or any, anything that would help you get a business sort of going. Um, if, there is a if there's a particular accomplishment that you've done, if you've developed something which has been commercialized, that would be very relevant. Don't worry if there's nothing on there. If you can use that page to put ideas or maybe if you've got a problem that you think there's an idea out there, you could write it down there. So don't, don't worry too much about the, the accomplishments page. We can leave it there. Okay. And it doesn't need to be, yeah, short is good. You know, less is more, <laughs> we sometimes say. Okay. So having sort of spent a bit of time thinking about yourselves and what you've sort of done so far, and um, if that is, I'm going to offer another opportunity for anybody to, to, who wants to come and mention an idea um, in front of this audience, you're welcome to come and do that. Um, if not, I have a proposal, which is to actually divide you into three groups. Um, I think there's about sort of 35, 36 of you, so maybe 10 to 12 in each group. Oh, sorry, is this an idea or a question? A question, okay. Okay, your question? Other fields, yes, any field, any field. Yeah. You can, yeah, the question was, can I propose a, an idea in any field? Yes, absolutely. No. Yes, we had the, the reason that we had the first, the pre, before lunch session was because we thought those were three quite relevant areas for Brazil and for South America. Um, but we're absolutely open to, to ideas um, which you think might be possible to develop into good businesses. And they may not be, they may not fall into those three categories that we were hearing about before lunch. Um, so you can write anything down like that on these, these forms. Okay. Okay, I think what we'll do then is, so I think it would be good for you to talk to each other. Um, and so I think but for the sake of getting you into groups, I'm going to do a randomization. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around and give you a, a number, a one, a two, or a three, and then I'll ask for the, the ones to go somewhere, the twos to go somewhere, and the threes to go somewhere. Not sure where yet, and I'll give you 15 minutes to have a sort of little group discussion about potential ideas um, and to share, sort of exchange what you think. In major, these are problems I think we need to find solutions to, could we come up with an idea that could be developed for the purposes of this workshop? Okay, so, you're going to, if that's okay? You want to, yes, one? One, you've got the number one, number two, number three, no. number one, number two, number three, number one, number two, number three, number one, number two, number three, one, two, 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 three, one. 
Okay, okay. Two, three, one, two, three, one. Okay. So has everyone got a number? Excellent. Okay. Um, can we use the mezzanine area right now? Yeah? Okay. So let's have the ones all go up into the mezzanine area. And that gives... Uh, sorry, Leticia. Hang on. Yeah. The, the, ones, the ones can be upstairs. The twos can be just out here in this area. And the threes, the threes can stay in here and use the back of the room or the front of the room or wherever you want. So one's mezzanine upstairs. One's the two, two's out here, and the threes here. Oi. Okay. Yeah. So I've just divided one, two, threes. Okay. okay. And you have 15 minutes. So that's 10 past. So until 20, 25 past three. So have a, have a discussion, any possible ideas. This is a randomized group, so it's not a, it's not a group that, it's just try to get some ideas. Number ones are upstairs, mezzanine, outside, upstairs. Where you had coffee, the number ones, yeah, upstairs. Number two is here, number threes can stay in here, okay? And you can either just have a general chat or arrange yourselves, good, thank you.